Our next interview is with Republican candidate for Maricopa County recorder Justin Heap. Arizona PBS aired in its method of contacting Mr. Heap to be part of the recorder debate on June 11th, resulting in his inability to participate. To correct that error, Arizona PBS is offering Mr. Heap this interview as an opportunity to have his positions heard by voters. Justin Heap, first question here. You are running against a Republican incumbent. You are a Republican. What's going on here? Why are you doing this? Well, it's become really clear, I think, both to the party and to the voters that Maricopa County's elections have made us a national laughingstock. The last election cycle was the worst run election in the country, and that has caused a monumental collapse in the trust that the voters feel in our elections. I grew up here in Arizona. I am a sixth generation Arizonan. I love our state, and I'm deeply concerned at the loss of trust that I'm seeing from my fellow Republicans and from voters really of all of all political parties. And so the only way to address the concerns of the voters and bring more transparency and regain the confidence of the voters is to replace the man in charge of that office. Why do you think there's been a lack of trust among the voters? Because there has been nothing found as far as evidence of problems with the Maricopa County Recorder's Office and elections in general. You, was, you know as well as anyone. A lot of court cases, nothing's come of it. Why the lack of trust? Well, it seems clear that our elections officials think that the lack of confidence that voters feel in the election is all external to the to the election processes. That uh, that elections are inherently secure, but that uh, that people either believe misinformation or for or there are foreign information coming in. That all of it is external to the office. The truth is, people are losing confidence in the elections because of the systemic problems that the voters see in the way elections are run, and the way that our county officials deal with the voters. I'll, I'll give you an example outside of a courtroom that that causes a great deal of trust that has nothing to do with court, and that is we've had now two uh, panel debates in front of audiences with, with Stephen Richer. Stephen Richer continues to insist that he is doing a great job cleaning our voter, our voter rolls, maintaining the numbers, and making sure that only registered voters are receiving the early mail-in ballots. In both of those times, I can simply counter that by asking the audience, please raise your hand if you or anyone you know received extra ballots in the mail for someone else. I have done this in groups all across Maricopa County. If you get any group of 100 or so voters together, about a third of the hands will go up and say they received extra ballots in the mail. That is proof that we are not cleaning our voter rolls, and that is the reason why people do not have confidence in the elections, because they see the same systemic problems cycle after cycle, and they can't even get their own elected officials to admit that this is a serious problem. And yet none of that affects the outcome of elections. None of that has been found to affect the outcome of elections. So the question is, why is the lack of trust there? It can be argued that the constant refrain that there is trouble and there are problems instills that lack of trust. How do you respond to that? Okay, as, as I just said, when you say no one, this has not been shown to have affected, how would we say that? If we are sending out, as it seems from the voters' perspective, potentially, let's say, 100,000 extra voters to voters who should not be receiving them, how exactly do we have confidence that, that, is, that, this, is, that this is election officials doing their job? And if we, if we want to talk in, about confidence and about, what, and about information that the voters get, then we need to look at our current county recorder and the way that he deals with the voters. He treats anyone who has legitimate questions with the election as if they believe misinformation or conspiracy theories. He is, while serving as a recorder, he is running a PAC, a super PAC to defeat MAGA candidates over whose elections he's about to oversee. Right there. Are you a MAGA candidate? Well, uh, if, if you're asking me, do I support Donald Trump? I've voted for Donald Trump in the general election in 2016. I voted for him again in 2020. He will be the nominee. I'll be proudly voting for him in 2024. Records show you didn't vote for Donald Trump in 2016. How do you square that? 
you didn't vote in 2016. No, uh, I was in another county. I'm not sure what. I went into the voting center. I pulled it. I'm not sure where they're pulling this data from. I wasn't in Maricopa County at that time. And I voted and I voted for Donald Trump. Um, I think believe you once uh, called Donald Trump a womanizer and a philanderer as well. And you've supported uh, Ted Cruz. Yeah, look, in the I, prim- well, I, I did my, support my question Ted Cruz is, in the primary. My question is, in the Republican Party, the MAGA contingent is strong. Why would the MAGA contingent want someone who I think changed your identification, your registration to independent at one time? What's going on here? And why do you think you deserve, this is a primary, Republican primary. We're not talking general here. You're talking to Republicans here. Why should they trust you? What the voters actually want is someone who is going to run that office and restore confidence, who is going to be more transparent than our current county recorder. I am a Freedom Caucus member. I have a 100% conservative voting record. Conservatives know that I have been one of the champions trying to fix our election systems. But the biggest biggest issues that we are facing right now is the lack of confidence in the election. If voters can't trust the system, they will simply walk away and stop voting. And voters of all parties, this isn't limited to the Republicans in the primary. This is Republicans, Democrats, independents, all report large numbers who do not have confidence in the system. That is a product of how we run the system, not, not of, any, of any misinformation that is spread online. You voted to require hand counting of ballots? Did yes. You, yeah. Why, why did you do that? I mean, hand, elections officials will tell you hand counting of ballots takes too long. It's not as accurate and it's far more costly. That is what is being done now, which has shown no problems, despite the fact that you have a lack of trust. Why would you vote for that? Well, why exactly would we would we be critical of that when we've moved to a voting center model in 2018? That voting center model has done nothing but make lines longer, has reduced trust in the system and given us all the problems. In the last election cycle, half the voting centers went down day of. If we went back to the precinct model, which is the way Arizonans voted all the way up until 2018, that system is easily more manageable and the best way that that we can do it. So so if it's more costly and it takes longer to get the results and it's not as accurate as elections officials all over the country will tell you, you say that's worth it because. Because the primary goal of what we are trying to do here, okay, is we need to run the recorder's office in like it is a business. And the currency we are trading in is the confidence of the voters. Voters do not have confidence in the way we are running our elections. And that is not a product of anything but the people that run our elections. And we have gone deliberately to a system, the voting center model, that disenfranchises voters, makes it harder to vote. We, we know we had tens, possibly hundreds of thousands of people with half our voting centers go down that could not vote. And then we're told, well, this is, this is cheaper. It, it, it's cheaper to do it this way. I don't see that looking at, the, uh, looking at the budget. The county recorder's office has increased the budget almost triple by what it costs to run elections. So okay. the, the voters in Maricopa County pay top dollar for the worst run elections in America. You talk about convenience in voting, yet you voted to end early voting. Why? Well, I think that we need to take a serious look at how we are doing vote, how we are doing voting. Look, this comes back to exactly what I said. We know that our voter rolls are not being cleaned and maintained. We know we are sending early ballots out to uh, to potentially hundreds of thousands of people. We are not doing what is required under law to clean and maintain our voter rolls. Do you think Republican so voters do, do you think Republican voters want to end early voting? I think that's a question that's going to be solved by the legislature and and the governor. What we need is is going to have to be that's, more transparency in the way that we run the system. That's a question for you and Maricopa County Republican voters. Well, do you I'm, think I'm they running want for the Maricopa get... County recorder's position, right. so I want to talk about what we can do in do the recorder's office. Right, right but now, you voted for to end voting. early voting. I, is that something that you think that people would want to put into the recorder's office, someone who thinks along those lines? I think a great deal of, I think what voters are desperate for is some actual integrity and transparency in the office. We have a lot of voters who do, who do want to see that. That legislation didn't go forward, and I will follow the voters. But as it stands right now, the law says that we are going to have early voting. I know that there's plenty right. of Republicans who like to see early voting. And so uh, we, what we can do, however, is make that early voting system secure so people can have confidence again in the system. Last question here, because we're running out of time. I want to make sure you get everything in okay. here. Um, did Donald Trump win 
the presidential election in 2020 in Arizona? Look, I know this is this is seems to be the only question that people want to ask. It's the last it's question a, I've asked down. you after a number of other questions. Right. So please answer. Uh, I, I've I've been asked this question over and over again in this way. I'm not interested in discussing what's happened. I am a I'm an attorney. I don't make statements that I don't that I don't know if I can prove. But what I can say is that I don't think our election laws were followed. I think that many people were disenfranchised, and that may have affected the outcome. What Did we you, are focused on right. is fixing the system so that whoever wins, yes. Republicans Republican or Democrat, the people can feel confidence that they know if you are going to run the worst run elections in America, it doesn't matter what the ultimate result is. A huge percentage of our voters are not going to trust that. That's neither a yes or a no. And I'm going to ask you about Carrie Lake in 2022. Did she win the governor's race in Arizona? Again, we the problem we had with the system this time is exactly the same problem we had in 2020, which is we are not running our system in a way that inspires any confidence. It we are sounds like you think she might have won an institution. It's, so we that means to protect an institution that the voters don't trust. And we and we need to fix it. The biggest problem we have facing our election system is not is not the potential for fraud. It is the fact that our voters do not have any confidence and really they don't have any reason that they should feel confidence in our elections because of the way we run it and we will restore that. Confidence. My last question to you, Republican voters in Maricopa County, lots of them, they do think Donald Trump won in 2020. They do think that Carrie Lake won in 2022. I can't get a yes or a no out of you. Because I think, it's, I think that what we are focusing on is fixing a broken system so that we can, so that we can reinstill trust. This is this is some sort of strange gotcha question that people keep trying to ask. It's it's a, I don't, sir, it's, it's not, not a gotcha. important. It's, it's not, not a it, gotcha. The important question is, did we run elections in a way that would inspire confidence in the people? The we two other do not, candidates we do not have that right now. The two other candidates in this race mm -hmm. have given an answer. One says Donald Trump and Kerry Lake did win and they were rigged out of the election. The other says they did not win. They lost fair and square. They answered it. Why can't you? Because the, the, the prime focus, my belief is this, is ultimately what I believe or think in any specific election is really not relevant to, to, this, to the question that we are looking at. The problem that we have is our voters don't trust the system. And if our voters can't trust the system, then we as elected officials need to address that. And the only way that we address that is by showing them in a transparent and open way that we are going to follow the law that all of our rules are, are, and securities are kept in place. And if people can feel confident in the system, they will be fine. I am not interested in trying to, in putting my thumb on the scale to help either side win. I want to clean up and fix our election system. And we will do that in that office. And we got to stop you right there. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you.